Hi hey YouTube. I wanted to do a video, just to have a quick discussion about uh, upward mobility. Um, before we get started though, a quick question for you guys. How cool are these uh, Canadian death dollars, honestly? I mean, I absolutely love these. I, I think this is one of my favorite uh, circulated coins um, that I've ever come across. I, I just think they're way too cool. I, I can imagine, you know, being a, uh, a kid in Canada in 1959 and getting this in my change. I, I'd, I'd love it. Yay or nay on the Canadian death dollar. So, you know, I've got a couple people that have been kind of busting my chops recently on my videos about some of my topics. Um, you know, uh, you know, like the one I did about Apple outsourcing their jobs. And the question they have is, well, what does this have to do with silver and gold? And, uh, <laughs> I mean, my response to that is everything. You know, uh, the, the economy, the systemic problems that we have. I mean, these are all reasons that we stack. These are the reasons that we're trying to protect ourselves. And, it, uh, you know, you have to kind of see how this all ties together. You know, you have to see how th these problems are starting to rear their heads. And you have to see how the people that we've elected to solve these problems are completely inept at doing so. And I like to have these discussions on my channel, first and foremost, you know, to give my thoughts, but then to hear what you guys have to say. You know, as an example, uh, John Smith, one of my subs, uh, linked me to an article from the uh, New York Times uh, answering a ton of the questions that I had. And uh, the, the article was both, um, both interesting and infuriating at the same time. You know... Um, I used Apple as an example because they're the most extreme example of a profitable company. And Google is manufacturing their phones right here in this country. So my question was simply, if Google can do it, why can't Apple? Given their extreme profitability. And that article did explain some of these things. And it made me mad because how do we let it get to this point? You know, there's one quote in there in particular that made me a little mad. It, uh, there was an Apple executive that said, Pfft, Hey, we make phones. It's not our job to fix America's problems. And he was right and he was wrong at the same time. No, I mean, they are a phone company. And it's not their job to, uh, to fix America's problems. But at what point does an executive have a responsibility... You know, of an American company to make sure that, you know, he employs Americans. I don't know the answer to that. I know that a pure capitalist will say nothing. He doesn't. It's their job to chase every dollar and make the shareholders happy, period. Well, even at the expense of, you know, as I responded to, uh, responded to a comment, I mean, even at the expense of eating the seed corn, I mean, you can't have a bigger vision. Why could Google do it and Apple can't? And I... You know, some of the responses, Hot Neil brought it with, what, with his response, are fantastic. And that's why I like discussing this stuff. So, I mean, my response there has always been, look, if you don't want to hear this stuff, you know, uh, go, make your, go make do a silver channel and discuss what you want to talk about. And people will either come or they won't. But this all ties in together. You know, we're, we're seeing structural and systemic problems that I'm not so sure we're going to be able to reverse. And this is a big deal. You know, what, what kind of truisms today are we going to look back on in 15 or 20 years, the next generation, our kids' generation, the mess that we're creating that they have to clean up? What are they going to talk about? Like, like we, one, one of the truisms today is, um, boy, you know, just a generation or two ago, it only took one income to uh, support, support a household, which was true. Now, there wasn't a day in time where suddenly that was no longer the case. It was a process. It was a slow rot. And then we needed two incomes. In 20 years, what are we going to be saying? Are we going to be saying, back in the day, you could uh, support a household with two incomes? Now it takes multi-generational, you know, multi multiple generations living under the same roof, all supporting the same household. Is that where we're headed? It, it, it kind of seems like it. You're already seeing it. You know, there are countries in the world where that is the norm. You know, I, I believe Vietnam is like that. I, I know that other countries in Asia are like that. The parents live there, or, or the older parents live there, the grandparents, I should say, live there. 
and and then the kids stay f- until they're thirty. Upward mobility was always a crucial part of American society. Push a little harder. Make it to that next tier. Work a little bit harder. You will be rewarded. That's what always drove the economy. That's gone. I went to, you know... um, Think about the man with the cart and the donkey's pulling the cart and he's got the stick with the string on it and the carrot. You know, the the proverbial, uh, the carrot (laughs) leading the donkey. Incentivizing the donkey to keep moving forward. You take that carrot away. Do you really get angry at the donkey for not going forward? He's just doing what donkeys do. Do you really get mad at people that pack it in and say it's not worth it? Do you really get angry at the at the people at the system when they or I'm sorry, do you get angry at the people when the system removes the carrot? I mean, that's what we're looking at here. You know, I went into um I went into Walmart this weekend. My wife and I had a weekend together. We never ever have a weekend together, and this weekend we did. We had to go to two stores. Actually, a few stores. We had to go to uh Walmart and Old Navy. And I hate going into Walmart, first of all. I just hate it. I really, really hate it. But my wife likes to uh, pick up a few beauty products cheap, so we went in there. And I went in there with the intent to kind of really observe. And I know, the small sample size, yada, yada, yada. One store in one town in Vermont on one Saturday afternoon, big deal. But I was just, I was kind of looking around and I was just surprised at the level of quit I saw in people. I've never quite seen it at this level. So many people, and they all had like the same body language. They all kind of had the same look on their face, completely devoid of joy. First of all, they're in Walmart, so how happy are you going to be? But in all honesty, you know, when people are shopping, they don't look this, uh, you know, this down and out. And it was just a store full of people that have capitulated. Just given up. How do you reverse that? You know, it used to be work harder. You will get there. You know, that's all available to you. When that's gone, what are you creating in society? And again, I hate to beat this point to death, but our elected officials, the people that we send to Washington to basically see around corners and to fix these messes, to create laws and then incentives for businesses to hire and everything else, are completely inept and they're asleep at the wheel. They're going to that trough of you know, hammering the middle class time and time again. But all they're doing is pushing more and more people into the ranks of the unemployed and the unemployable. You know, we're, we're, we're very close to having a two-class system. And, and that has always been the strength of America, is the middle class and that upward mobility. But it's going away. So then we went to Old Navy And first of all, you know, I talk about uh, inflation all the time. Well, they had, uh, I mean, an unbelievable selection of women's uh, shirts and and tank tops for five bucks and two bucks. Five bucks for a shirt and two bucks for a tank top. So, you know, discretionary purchases, I think, are starting to come down in price because of lack of demand. Okay, I, I've never seen things this cheap. And, and this was pretty good stuff. I mean, five bucks and two bucks, and these were nice looking uh, clothes. I was, I was shocked. My wife literally had an armload of clothes for $38. 
Okay, I mean that's the good thing. You know, it's it's always it's always the necessities that I, I kind of uh, that that are really crippling people. And as the the cost of necessities eat up more and more of our paychecks, there's less and less money for uh, disposable income in order to make discretionary purchases. That's what's really crippling crippling us as well right now. So yeah, we, we kind of made out. We were able to buy some clothes for cheap. But the, the difference was going in there and understand Old Navy is not a high-end store by any stretch. But uh, the clientele in there did not look as defeated. And, and this isn't me just picking on poor people here, okay? It was just an observation. And, you know, I, I think a lot more of those Old Navy shoppers, if we keep progressing the way that we are, are going to find themselves... In, in the ranks and rank and files of Walmart and with you know after they've given up you know when you take that carrot away and you create less incentives to move up um, you know I've been uh, one thing that I've been doing at my job is I've been working towards a manager position and I don't know if I'm ever gonna get there okay but it's what I've been uh, aspiring to but as as the workforce keeps shrinking which it is you know, they're not creating any new manager jobs at this time. But a manager job at the company that I work for always guaranteed you an upper middle class life. You know, you, um, you would sacrifice time and you'd, it, the, the level of responsibility is, is a light year is ahead of what I'm doing now. But the jump in pay always made it worth it. Do you know what I would get now if I if I got that manager job? A four or five percent raise, and then I'd have to go off shift. So basically, just the night premium alone is all I would get. I mean, is that worth it to disrupt my family, to disrupt my schedule for a, a, an amount of dollars that I could make up by just simply doing online surveys? Selling a few things on eBay? Is that really worth disrupting my life? You know, it wasn't that long ago that you would say absolutely because the amount of pay made it worth it. You're seeing this play out all over the country. You know, we're creating problems that we may not be able to fix. You know, like I said, uh, you know, it's all a process. And as the system continues to decline, we're creating problems here that uh, there's not going to be an answer for, much like we're not going back to uh, one income supporting an entire household. When that carrot is removed, what's really left? 